everyone. Welcome to another episode of Driven. I'm Angela Craig with Dagley Insurance, and my guest today is one of the founders of Mr. Restore, Clint Janelle. Clint, thank you so much for being on with me today. Your company, um, Mr. Restore, is fire, water, and um, storm restoration. Yeah, yeah right? fire, water, storm damage restoration. That's correct. Okay. That's exactly what we are, what we do. Then you have to be dealing with a lot of people that are probably stressed out a lot. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, most of the people we meet are having one of their worst days, right? Our client base consists of people that have had things go really badly in most cases. Sometimes it's minor. Um, all of it's fixable in all cases. But yeah, some it's, you know, this is the worst thing a lot of people have experienced in their most valued possession. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to, you know, kind of come in and try to help save the day and do the best we can to calm fears, ease anxieties and, and be a source of, of help. So Clint, um, how did you get into the business of restoration? Yeah. So Something when you were little that you, you thought you'd be doing, were you always, no, not things? really, right? Like not really. So I, I've grown up, I grew up in a, a family that was service industry related. So my grandfather started a plumbing company in 1943. Um, when, uh, air conditioning became a thing, they jumped into that too. And so I learned how to be handy. I learned how to be mechanical. Um, as I was coming through high school, getting ready to go to college, um, I had some opportunities. I was going to do some other stuff, but some situations landed me staying at home uh, to help my family's business continue moving forward. So I jumped into indoor air quality because mold was a big thing at that time. So mm -hmm. black mold was a big issue and Air Brockovich was doing her thing. And there was all this stuff going on in, in the mold space. Um, and a lot of that was tied to the restoration industry. So I knew a bunch of contractors that were doing restoration work because I was doing consulting on the mold side for a bunch of insurance carriers and commercial properties and telling these restoration guys what needed to happen to properly clean up mold. Mm -hmm. So I got into the space kind of that direction. Uh, then I left it when the space, the, the insurance um, mold space got ugly in Texas for a while. Uh, and so I kind of got out of it, played around with some other stuff, um, wound up you know, going through the economic collapse in 2008 where everybody's trying to figure out what they're doing uh, with a brand new child. My oldest son is, was born in 2008. So I'm trying to navigate what's going on with everything kind of crumbling in the world around us. Kind of feels it, not as bad as what 2020 was, but it was, it was similar at some level with some things that were going on. Um, and then I knew the restoration space and I knew that uh, uh, I could operate inside that space. And then we had Hurricane Ike. So um, I jumped into it and kind of went at it from there. What do you enjoy most about what you do? The thing that I really enjoyed the most about restoration space, like I enjoy being able to go out to someone's house and help them understand what's happening and navigate the stress of what's going on and give them some comfort and be able to provide a solution that fixes whatever problem they perceive to be insurmountable. And that's, that's kind of cool for me. Thank goodness for people like you. <laughs> yeah. We're those kind of guys that you are glad you know when you have to know them, but you don't really want to ever have to deal with them. Right. It's, that's kind of what we operate in. You know, it's, I guess it's not that much dissimilar from insurance either. Right. Like, okay, we know we have to have this. We hope we never have to use this. When you do, mm -hmm. do you want somebody, you know, and can trust for sure. I'm going to ask you some fun questions. What was your very first car? My very first car was an 89 Chevy Beretta. What color was it? It was black with a gray interior and had a little red pinstripe on it. Ooh. It was a pretty cool car back then, right? So I'm, I'm guessing that you drive a big truck now, right? I do drive a big truck now. Oh, is yeah. that... Have you heard the story about my truck? Is, there, is this something... I, I, no, I, I, have no, I know nothing about your truck. I just know okay. that I was going to ask what your dream car was. And I was thinking that you're probably driving a truck. I drive a truck. I don't... Okay. I'm not a is car that, guy. Okay. I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be pulling for the McLaren or the Lamborghini or any of those kind of things. It's just not my style. I kind of like the truck side of things. Um, I, I waited a pretty long time to get my particular vehicle. I've driven trucks a lot for a long time, but I currently mm -hmm. drive a six door excursion. So I have a fully huh. custom. I didn't even know that was the custom, thing. Uh, yeah, it's not. So it was custom built uh, six door excursion. So, and you guys insure it. So, you know, oh my gosh. If you could tell your younger self something, what piece of advice would you tell your younger self? Um, I, that would be a great question uh, to think about. Um, <laughs> there, there's, there's probably a significant list of things I could tell myself like, Hey, don't do that. That's stupid. Avoid these people. Um, that's going to cause you all kinds of problems. And there's plenty of that that I would have. 
um, I would probably, um, I would probably tell myself to more than likely, I would tell myself to push harder a little bit. Um, I, I, we've, we've likely missed some growth opportunities because I wanted to be smart about doing stuff instead of putting a throttle down and seeing what happens. And that may have been a great force and it may not have been right. What accomplishment are you most proud of? Um, I've got a really great family and a really great team that works with us. And, um, a lot of that is in spite of me, I think, right? Like when, if I look at, if I look at the company, um, I, I wouldn't go, Oh, I'm such a spectacular leader. I'm a really smart boss. I've done really great things. I'm super intelligent. I'd be like, wow, how did this happen with me? Same thing for my family, right? Like, um, we've got good kids. My kids are really good. They're talented. Um, they, they seem to be relatively smart. So I've got a 12 year old son, a nine year old daughter and a five year old son. Um, and they're just, they're good kids. They're fun to be around all of that. And I look at it and I'm like, I let clearly that's mom, right? Cause that's, I can't, I can't do that. I'm not going to take some credit too. So it's, it's just one of those things that like, I'm really proud of my, I'm really proud of my family and my team and what's taken place and, and what they've all accomplished. Who's had the biggest impact on who you've become? So like I could look back to several um, individuals that were primarily, I would say all of it comes from like youth ministers. There are a couple of youth ministers growing up and um, developing and forming in what I believed and who I am in my faith and what character that brings out of me when I'm doing business and trying to help others. And um, so it's led us to be able to do things that we believe in, like helping adopt a training foundation and supporting other ministry organizations and giving things away to people that needed it because they needed it. And it's the right thing to do. Um, and so I would look at, you know, um, at, at that, I would look at, um, uh, my dad, um, who kind of formed me in business to like, I, I grew up watching him run a business. Right. And so that kind of led me to want to do my own thing and be an entrepreneur. And uh, so there's been a lot of people that have been very influential in forming who I am. Um, you know, from that perspective, my wife has been great uh, from a support to help encourage, let's go do it. Let's try it and let's see what happens. And you seem like I, a very grateful, grateful man. I, I, I am more than grateful. Yes. I've got one last question for you that I ask everybody. Um, and it's what drives you every day to keep going, to be the best that you can be for your family, your business, your, your customers. Um, your yeah, what's my why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my why. Um, it's really about being able to do more to help others. Um, like if I look at the vision of what we're doing, we have an opportunity to be successful and profitable by helping someone who is in a time of need and truly being there to help them and help them first. Um, and that, that, alone opens opportunities for us to be able to serve. And like, I'm, I'm all in on, I want to be able to be viewed as someone that you could rely upon that is going to help you no matter what the situation was. And hopefully that comes out and resonates with the people that I've interacted with. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you, Clint, for coming and being a guest. And, um, Gosh, everybody, if you need, if you need restoration and we hope you don't, but please, if you do <laughs> reach out to Clint and his team over at Mr. Restore and Clint, what's your white guys' website? Uh, it's just Mr. Restore.com. So Mr. Restore.com. Uh, our phone number is 877-631-7576. Well, thanks so much uh, for being a guest on Driven and thank you everybody for tuning in and stay driven. <laughs>